Hi, my name is Charlie Gerard, and I'm currently a senior front end developer at Netlify. So at the time, at first in my career, I was a digital producer because I studied marketing and advertising. And uh, in my first jobs in creative agencies, I was managing developers, but I wasn't one. And I was really interested in what my developers were building because at the time it was kind of the beginning of 3D in the browser. So we started building really uh, cool interactive experiences and I really wanted to learn how that worked. But I tried to code a little bit, you know, after hours, uh, after work. But when you really don't know anything at all, I didn't know what to Google. I was like, I think I knew a bit of HTML, but I didn't really, I, don't, I didn't even know how to add JavaScript to a web page. Uh, I had no idea what it was. So I quit my job and I did a um, three-month boot camp um, to learn to code uh, because I was thinking I there's no way I can go back to uni in Australia it would have been really expensive for me and I was thinking um, if it doesn't work out I can still go back and be a producer um, because that's you know I have a master's in marketing so it's, if it doesn't work out, I can still do that but I loved it um, and I never kind of wanted to go back <laughs> to marketing between the time that I finished my bootcamp and I started my first job, I got really interested in uh, JavaScript and hardware. So I think one of the first thing that I built was to control a Sphero robotic ball uh, with hand movements over a, a device called the Leap Motion. I think over time I created a portfolio of um, creative projects, and I think uh, when I, you know, when I applied for the New York Times, uh, they definitely they did look at my portfolio. I mean, I definitely got the job at the time because they could see uh, that I was exploring a space that not everybody was exploring. So it kind of like was my little niche. I was in the part of the New York Times that was around um, branded content. My role. Was or my team's role um, was to m find a way to instead of just having an article that you that you scroll and that you read, uh, you were using innovative technologies in the browser to make it more interactive. So sometimes we were using 3D in the browser to interact with a little drone that was flying, or we were using the web audio API to create uh, a sequencer with different sounds. Um, so it was just trying to make people remember a certain type of content by making it more interactive. I think to me that the link between programming and art is um, a way of just expressing yourself. Uh, I know that a lot of the times when people think about programming, they really only think about functional things, like uh, I need to build a, a piece of software or a website to sell something. Uh, but I think that anything can be a, a way of expressing yourself, and code is definitely one. Uh, there's so many things that you can do with code. You can uh, create music and visuals, you can create little robots, or now with machine learning you can also, yes, totally generate some pieces of art. And I think it's definitely a a way to express yourself because before you write these lines of code, like there's nothing and all of a sudden you write them and it's not only just, there's a lot of like thought process as well about what am I going to write, what am I going to try to generate and I feel like uh, art is a bit the same as well. It's like you just get inspired by a lot of things and you express yourself and the what you, whatever you decide to use to create art is up to you. I have a to the list of things that I want to explore. Uh, but what I, I don't always think about tech as a single thing. I spend a lot of time looking at what research centers do, sometimes that have nothing to do with technology. Um, so, you know, you have the, uh, sometimes the Disney Research Lab or some, some kind of Google Creative Lab or things like that. And I look at what they do because a lot of the times they do more uh, research. They don't always build a prototype, but they explore certain areas of even just like physics sometimes that I just read about. And then I think about it, I'm like, oh, I could actually mixed technology with that. Uh, I think something that I was looking at recently was around uh, plants and how they actually use uh, electrical signals as well. And I'm kind of like, well, I could actually get that data with Arduino and build something with it. And I don't always know where it goes, but I like that moment when I look at something totally uh, non-related to tech and find a way to actually mix it with tech. Otherwise, what I do is when I know that I want to learn something new about a certain technology, uh, for example, machine learning at the moment, or it's I've been working on that for the past year, and I know that I, if I just read a tutorial about how to uh, predict the price of Bitcoin, for example, that's not really something that I want to spend my time on. It's like, well, maybe it would make me rich, but that's not really my goal. Um, so I like to look at a certain technology or a certain framework and um, spend some time thinking about, okay, what, what am I excited about? And then I kind of like go slowly like that and 
I start I just try to to think about like different ways of using uh, technology. I think at some point when I built a prototype around the Beat Saber game. Um, I remember just, I think I was just looking at a video of somebody playing actual Beat Saber and I was thinking, well, I can't because I don't have the, the gear, I don't have a VR headset and I definitely don't have the space, I don't have the game. Uh, but I was thinking, well, wait, maybe I don't have actual Saber, but I know that you can do 3D in the browser and I know that with machine learning you can detect like the motions of the body. So, well, I can just pair that and make my own little prototype. And it's just um, like little by little, a thought process. I think that um, picking challenging side projects has helped me to understand that you know I'm I'm learning. I'm not supposed to uh, be very good at something I've never done before. If I've never done it, then you know I can't know how to fix a certain problem I've never seen. Uh, but I I got better at um, at understanding that um, it just takes time. I've gotten a lot more. Uh, patient and a lot more um, like resilient to kind of like keep going even if I feel like I'm failing or if I don't understand something I make sure that I don't feel stuck so if there's something that's that's too big and I start to give up I, I really try to break it down into pieces find a time maybe an hour like every night and try to tick the boxes to finish that project I think when I started I wish um, people talked a bit more that uh, about the fact that you don't have to know everything um, I think especially when I started my career I was looking at senior developers and I thought I thought that they knew everything I thought that after five years of experience, you're supposed to just have all of the answers. And I wish that more people were um, open about the fact that it's you're not supposed to know everything. Maybe you have a better understanding of how to get somewhere, but you're not, you don't know everything by heart. So I often get asked how I get the time to actually uh, do all of this. And I think that um, over time, so over the years, first of all, it's become a bit easier because I've accumulated a certain amount of, of knowledge where I don't have to spend as much time as I used to. Uh, but it's also the fact that I try to be very organized about how I spend my time. So, for example, um, I like to have this kind of like, I'm going to say work-life balance, but it's kind of like work-work balance. <laughs> but what I mean is that... Um, I, for example, I, I try to really um, stay at work from like my nine to five. Like if we're not releasing or if we're not fixing a bug something or if, it, if I don't really have to stay at work longer, then I won't because I know that when I go home, I still have my personal work that I want to do and I know that it makes me happy. And if I don't do it and if I focus my time on my actual job instead of the things that I do on my time, like it doesn't make me happy. One of the purpose of my blog is uh, for me to remember to remember how I built something. It's like sometimes I spend I spend a lot of time building something, but if I don't write down uh, a tutorial, and I will probably forget in six months exactly how I did it. So there's a few times where I went back to my own <laughs> tutorial to remember how to do something. Uh, but the the main uh, other goal is to kind of demystify some some of the technology that I play with. I know that if um, I try really hard to explain things in an easier way, so that that people don't have to struggle the way I did when I started a particular project. Um, if I want people to get more creative and to not be scared to play with technology, uh, to me it's important to show them, hey, I started like this and maybe this word seems complicated to understand, but all it means is that and, you know, um, I'm trying to find examples that people can relate to uh, so that if, uh, you know, exactly like with machine learning, instead of just, you know, talking about like just throwing the names of algorithms, I'm kind of like, okay, you don't have to care about how they implement it. You just have to care about how to use it at first, what they're good at. And then if you want to dive deeper, you can do that. What I love is that sometimes uh, when I get the feedback of some people reading some of my blog posts and they were like, oh, I tried it as well because I could see that it wasn't that hard. Then I'm kind of like, okay, I just, I win. Uh, yeah. <laughs>